Hello, my name is Jim Scappa and I'm the founder and CEO of Altair. Uh, today we're going to talk about a completely new product in the manufacturing space for Altair. We're pretty excited about this one. The product plays in the injection molding market. Uh, the injection molding market is a ginormous market, $250 billion market. And it's really relevant for a vast array of applications from toys to high performance, low bearing components in sectors like consumer electronics, aerospace, and automotive. So it's a really, really important market in the, uh, in the world of engineering. We want to introduce a new product that we call Inspire Mold, and it's a revolutionary end-to-end -end simulation solution for injection molding part and mold designers. Uh, it embodies the, the core philosophy of an intuitive, simulation-driven design for manufacturing approach that, that all of the Inspire products have. So it's super easy to use, it's very lightweight. Uh, it's really designed for designers and mold designers. And uh, you know they can learn it very, very quickly, uh, move through it very, very easily, and, it, and it's just extremely powerful. Um, one of the most exciting things about this product, beyond the fact that it's so easy to use and lightweight, is that we've developed a completely new, extremely fast, next generation 3D solver. So rather than the two and a half D uh, solvers that, that you're typically using in this market, because of performance, uh, we've developed this very, very fast 3D solver that you can actually dial in the performance with a lot of accuracy and get very, very fast uh, solutions. Beyond that, we are providing you with access to a very comprehensive materials database for the plastic materials that you want to use. And speaking of the plastic material database, just in the last two weeks, we've, we've made two pretty significant announcements into the market. One is another new product from Altair, the Altair Material Data Center. Uh, the Material Data Center is a, a uh, very, very modern, browser-based, so it's all cloud-native solution, um, where you can look up and, and, and manage your own data, you know, if you're a company, and we provide a lot of data because we've been partnering with all the major material suppliers uh, across the world for the last uh, couple of years now as we're building this in, in the background. And then the other important announcement that we made uh, just a couple weeks ago was the acquisition of a German company uh, called Embase. And Embase was the company that worked with all of the plastic material suppliers in the world and brought together a database called the Campus Database that's quite well known in the space. Um, so by bringing in Embase and all of those relationships, all of that expertise and all of that material data uh, for all, all of the plastics industry, together with our new Altair Material Data Center, and now with the introduction of Altair Inspire Mold, we feel like we're, we're really bringing a, a, a very, very exciting new solution into this market, into this very large and important market. Um, I just want to talk a bit about the history for Altair. You know, we go back more than 10 years ago, uh, where we, we really sat together inside of Altair and we said if we had a blank sheet of paper, how would we uh, reinvent the way that we're designing? Um, and we had sort of come up the history of, you know, drafting, you know, on drafting boards and then 2D design and then 3D design that, that we have today. But we really wanted to create that sort of next generation CAD, which was simulation driven design, really more of a simulation solution that has all the geometry power uh, within it. And that was Inspire ultimately. So we've been working on Inspire for more than 10 years. And uh, I can tell you in the last uh, year or two, it's the fastest growing product other than SimSolid in our portfolio. It's, it's just growing at a very, very aggressive rate in the market. A lot of take up and a lot of new capabilities coming in. But one of the most important things about Inspire and the vision for Inspire is that we focus on simulation-driven design for manufacturing as well. Uh, our customers tell us that it's not enough to optimize and create uh, high-performing designs, 
we have to consider the manufacturing aspect of these designs as well and integrate that into the whole uh, design and optimization process. So we've been building a portfolio of absolutely next generation technologies for manufacturing over the last probably seven, eight years now, casting, metal forming, extrusion, additive, polyurethane foaming that, that came in just in the last year with an acquisition in, in Korea, and now the mold filling technology. So we are extremely excited to introduce this, this new uh, product for mold filling, Altair Inspire Mold, um, to sit alongside all these other solutions. Lots of additional new things coming within the Inspire platform as well. So with that, I welcome you to uh, to see the rest of this this uh, introduction, and I uh, hope you'll you'll try this product for yourselves. Thank you. Injected molding is one of the most common manufacturing processes used in the industry. We are surrounded with plastic parts uh, in our kitchen, in computer devices, mobile phones. Finding the right configuration of the so-called 3Ms, material, molds, and molding machines can be a challenge. If it's done wrong, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna leave yourself open to a lot of part and mold design rework. That's common, and when it happens, the cost can be excessive. Redesign is really costly and time-consuming and often leads to last-minute compromises in the performance of the part as well. Simulation is best done early and often throughout the whole design process. As soon as you're starting to get the design, you really do a quick manufacturability check early and then continue to do those checks as the design evolves. Inspire Mold builds on the manufacturing capabilities that we have in casting, forming, 3D printing, and extrusion in Inspire today. It's our latest manufacturing simulation edition, and it enables both part designers and mold designers to simulate the injection molding process from the early concept stages of part design to the final detailed stage near the end, including filling, packing, cooling, shrinking, and more. I've had a lot of experience with injection molding in the past, and when I first saw Inspire Mold, I was very impressed with both the ease of use and the speed of the solution. It's fully 3D, so it doesn't rely on 2D simplifications, and yet it can solve a complex molding problem, often in minutes instead of hours. And the interface is much more intuitive than competing products, so users can get up and running quickly. Everything is transparent for the user. You don't need to do any complex setup. You don't need to have a specific knowledge on finite element analysis to perform any kind of simulation inside the Inspire platform. Inspire Mold is intended primarily for part and mold designers. That being said, because it's so friendly and fast, it is democratizing the use of injection molding simulation in the design process. Now, designers can make use of simulation technology to have a better communication with manufacturing people. Now we can produce better parts with better quality. Inspire is the leading product on the market for doing early design optimization. Leveraging Altair's powerful manufacturing constraints and simulation capabilities makes a big difference. Inspire Mall is a truly democratization of simulation. By simulating the manufacturing process right from the concept stages of design, they can account for any of the issues that may arise later, and they can account for them early in the design process we can improve the manufacturing process to avoid defects, to reduce rejection rates, and to improve the quality of the parts we are producing. We can decrease the time to market, we can improve the performance of the part, and we can reduce the scraps. At the end, we are reducing cost. I really think that Inspire is, is positioned in a great way to provide valuable insight across a broad range of manufacturing processes. Hi folks, this is James Degg. I'm Chief Technical Officer of Design and Simulation Solutions here at Altair. And I just want to say a few words at the start here, uh, just to tell you a little bit more about Inspire and, and why we're doing the manufacturing solutions. So, you know when you're designing a part, uh, especially nowadays, uh, things get really complex very fast. You're, you're most interested, of course, in the end performance of your part, that it meets all the requirements that you have for the design, strength, speed, power, whatever it may be 
for your particular application. Um, cost is always an issue. And at the end of the day, you can design the greatest part, but if you can't manufacture it efficiently, or if you have issues in manufacturing, you're right back to the start again. And that you heard Jim Scappa talking about in his presentation a moment ago, about when we conceived of Inspire right from the get-go, you know, our, our philosophy was that simulation has to be at the heart of the design process, that you have a working model that you're evaluating at every stage of design, right from inception all the way to the final detailed design. And that's what Inspire does. So it begins at the design process where you can import an existing design or do the design work yourself in the product. And then move just without any extra products right into the performance simulation. So understanding the stresses and the motions and the deflections and the parts. And, and now what we're talking about is manufacturing products. So as you move from understanding the performance is good, the first thing you want to know is can you actually manufacture it? Can I do something like a mold fill solution or a metal forming? And part by part, you may have different manufacturing uh, methods required for the different parts in your assembly. So we want to cover the full breadth of manufacturing uh, issues that you, you may run into right in the design process. And that's why we've really created this portfolio uh, right within the same design tool for doing casting simulation and sheet metal forming, injection molding, uh, extrusions of polymers and metals, additive manufacturing, polyurethane foaming, and more. So with each one of these, if you do need to make a design consideration to optimize the way the manufacturing process takes place, you're just right in the same tool to make those changes. And you can then study the performance um, trade-offs that you may have to make or not make it. So having it in one tool is really the goal here and covering with really high accuracy, high speed solutions that are posed uh, in terms of the designer and the, and the manufacturing specialist that needs to work in is what the whole philosophy of the product is about. So without any further ado, I'm gonna hand off to uh, Ken Welch, who is our senior VP in charge of the entire product line and let him get us started. my great pleasure today to introduce Inspire Mold. Okay, so what can Inspire Mold do? Well, first, it can do a quick check on part manufacturing feasibility. It allows you to answer the fundamental question of, will the part fill? This is important information to know as it's easy to, to introduce small features that can be difficult to mold later. Second, Inspire Mold can help detect minimize and eliminate common molding defects, such as sink marks, air traps, weld lines, or part warpage. And last, and probably most importantly, it allows you to reduce costs by optimizing injection molding cycle time and part weight. Pennies saved here add up to significant cost savings for high volume production runs. As Jim said in his opening remarks, for Inspire Mold to be used in design, it must be extremely easy to learn and use. We believe that Inspire Mold has the industry's most intuitive user environment. Its user interface is graphical and intelligent. We hope to show you this in our demonstration here today. Second, to be successful, it must work at the speed of design. That is, as the design evolves, Inspire Mold must be fast enough to keep up and provide feedback. Inspire Mold uses a new full 3D adaptive technology with works without the approximations of typical two and a half D solvers. And it is fast. Think what took, think what took once took days now takes hours. Things that took hours now takes minutes or even seconds. Inspire Mold lets you find and fix common manufacturing defects early in the design process. Okay, here's a, here's a look at our user interface. I won't spend a lot of time here since we're gonna show it in the demonstration, but I will say creating a model is very fast. We have one click generation for things such as sprues, runners, gates, cooling lines, etc. And I think you'll see that uh, to create a model is uh, very simple to do in Inspire Mold. In terms of physics, uh, Inspire Mold supports all of the common injection molding physics, things like filling, packing, cooling, uh, warpage prediction, 
Uh, you can do these individually, or you can run them chained together, fill, pack, cool, warp, etc. We predict fiber orientation. Uh, we do semi-crystalline polymers, and coming in our next release will support a hot runner systems as well as valve gates. Our solver, it may be new, but it's been extensive, extensively validated. We validated versus uh, reference solutions, versus tests, and versus uh, uh, versus um, just uh, other product run results. In all cases, we found it gives great correlation, and we're extremely happy with both its accuracy and its speed. Okay, probably the thing I'm most excited about are two recent announcements. One, the release of Alter Material Data Center, our new cloud-based material data application. And two, the acquisition of Embase, a leading supplier of plastic material properties. Together with Material Data Center and Embase, we are building the most comprehensive plastics database in the market. This will have thousands of simulation-ready material properties that can be used directly inside of Inspire Mold. And this is only part of a broader material data, a data initiative for Altair. This will eventually it will include metals, composites, ceramics, et cetera, all in a form that is simulation ready and compatible with Altair solvers as well as uh, other industry solvers. So this is very exciting and I'm looking forward to how this builds out over the next, uh, the next several months. Okay, with that, I'd like to turn it over to Martin Salina and Martin will give you a demonstration of, of the product. Martin, over to you. All right, thank you, Ken, and uh, welcome everybody. So, my goal during this demo will be to show you how easy it could be to use a tool that integrates the most advanced simulation technology in the market, that is Inspire Mold. So we have around 20 minutes to review the workflow to set up a very, very complex fluid dynamic problem, coupled with the thermal analysis using different boundary conditions uh, for complex assemblies. And my, to be honest, my burn is, uh, I don't know what I will do with my remaining 19 minutes. So I will figure out, but let's So I will use this, uh, uh, device, a, a mouse. Uh, I like this model because most of us uh, knows uh, what is that. Uh, many of us may have one in our hands and it has uh, several things to understand. It should be nice, uh, the outer surface should be, should have no mark, uh, should, have, should be smooth, uh, in the inner side, we have a lot of plastic parts that are working together. So as a, as a designer, uh, this kind of that component that should be, look simple has uh, several challenges. Uh, so we need to be sure that the part will never break. We need to be sure that the part will look nice. And uh, we need to be sure that all the components uh, will meet the design requirements, okay? So I will focus on these two parts, okay, these two one assembly and one part. Uh, so let me go to a quick review of the workflow in the, our five step simulation setup. So we have divided Inspire mold in five steps. The first one is to define the part from the assembly we want to configure uh, and we want to simulate, okay? The second step is to define the gate location or the location where the material will come inside the part, the injection point, let's say. Uh, we have tools to create, edit, or modify runner systems or gates or sprue uh, that will be shown during the demo. Uh, then we, can ha we have tools to create other components that are involved in the manufacturing process, like the mold, the cooling lines, inserts or any other type of component, it can be created or it can be imported inside Inspire Mold from any CAD in the market. Finally, we need to set up the process. As James mentioned, we can perform filling, packing, cooling, and work page analysis, considering also fiber orientation. The setup is very, very simple and easy to follow. Uh, 
we are asking the user exactly the same things he will set up on the machine or the same parameters he it re, be, will be required to produce a part like this and finally we will run the analysis that is a set up a couple of very easy uh, to do a very simple configuration and run the, the the process and finally we will need to analyze the results the software inspire more will help us to understand uh, where we can find some defects and how we can mitigate these common defects we could find in, in, a, in any injection molding process like seam marks, weld lines, alien traps or warpage after the molding of the part. So I think it's time to start the demo uh, and to be honest I will feel bad telling you that Inspire Mold is really easy to use or really simple and showing a recorder or video of a, of a demo. So if you allow me, I will go to, I'm a bit risky, I will do a really live demo. So we have the, uh, this nice assembly of our mouse and uh, we have a, a, all the parts inside, okay? And uh, I will focus first on this component here, okay? This component is the wheel support. Uh, this component help us to do the center click, okay, and to move up and down when we have a, in a Word document or, or in a web page. One curiosity or one th uh, requirement for this component is that the wheel will be supported in these two points. Let me isolate this component. It will be supported in these two points, okay, and the force that the user will do uh, when he perform the center click will be applied in these two points. So for the designer, this is a critical region uh, in the structural requirements. So we should be careful about uh, the defects and the quality of the part in everywhere, but in particular in this, in this region here. So let's start the design. I will do some mistakes, okay, on purpose, just in order, in order you can see uh, how to predict defects or how to analyze a defect, okay? So let's start. As I said, the first thing we should do is to define the part we want to produce. Uh, we are going to define the material. We have a database, extended database of material uh, and a group uh, organized by groups. And then every group contains different type of materials. As Ken and James mentioned, we have uh, signed an, an agreement recently with Embase and uh, we will have access to an extended material database in the near future. So once we define the material, we will define the melting temperature, let's say 260 degrees, and I will start defining my process. So the first thing I should do is to define the gate location. So I will place a gate just here. The gate size will be 0 0.8 millimeters of diameter. I can change the shape of the gate, the location, the radius. So as I say, we are using geometry to define the problem. So at any time, I can modify not only my gate or runner or mold, but also my part. And this is very convenient for a designer. I, I will explain why later on. So once we have defined the gate, I will go quickly to the process definition. I will define the filling time, let's say 1.2 seconds. And I will tell, don't stop the process if I am exceeding any machine parameter. I don't want to set up anything about packing or cooling right now, and I will hit the run button really quick, and the simulation will start, okay? So just to sum up what I have done uh, in during the setup, I select the part I want to produce, I place a gate, uh, and I defined some very few process conditions like the filling time, gate location, and I just launch the simulation, defining only that I will use the fast mode of the of the simulation. So as far as the simulation start, and I have 10% or 20% of the simulation, I can call my results, and I can start I can start analyzing the results. So as you can see, the simulation in the fast mode is extremely fast. Okay, and we can have a result in very few seconds. So I'm computing this solution, this simulation live in front of your eyes. And as you can see, 
the solution is, is taking less than 20 seconds. Okay, of course, the part is uh, small, it's simple, but just it can, you can get an idea of the calculations time we are managing in our fast solver. So we can see a green flag here. It means the simulation has finished. So I will reload my results and I will play to check the evolution of the temperature, for example. I can check filling time to all the part. I can check the pressure to produce this part. I can check the temperature at the core, temperature at the shared heating layer, I can check velocities, uh, air traps, and in particular, I'm interested in weld lines. So as you can see, Inspire Mold is showing me where the weld lines will be located. As you know, weld lines is generated by material that is arriving from different fronts to different regions of the part, to the same region of the part, generating a kind of weld material, okay? As I told you at the beginning, this is a extremely, extremely, uh, complex region because we have the mold wheels being supported here and it's in the structural behavior of behavior of the part is very important to keep this region safe not of course all the regions should be safe but this is in particular important so as you can see we have a well line that is contacting this point very close to the critical region so this is not convenient so what to do in this case and it can be extended to any part that we are designing so basically, we can go back to the runner the system design. I can remove this gate. I can place a new gate in another location with the same size. I can hit the run button and perform a new iteration. So what the software is doing is taking into account the previous configuration with the new gate. He's launching a new analysis to compute a new simulation of this particular part with the new gate location, okay? Uh, so it will take, again, another 20 seconds, 30 seconds to, to run the full analysis, and we will be able to see the results. I have the results ready uh, here, so we don't need to wait even 20 seconds. So let's see how the filling is going on right now. So now you can see fitting first this region, of course, the gate is located here, and we can see, uh, how the material evolves inside the cavity. Let's check uh, filling time. Now you can see the filling time is more homogeneous through all the part. And let's go to check what we are interested in, in wet lines. So now we was able to remove wet lines from this particular location. Now wet lines are located here, here, and here. And we have the ability to add gates in other locations, multiple gates, trying to move these well lines away if we consider this is decreasing the structural behavior of the part. But this is the real advantage. We can perform multiple iterations within a very, very, very few amount of time. And not only that, once we have optimized the position of the gate, we can go back to our running system design and we can say, okay, now I want to produce a mold with multiple cavities. So I want to create a four cavity mold. Okay, so I will place my gate and Inspire Mold automatically will come out with a full design of my runner distribution and the four cavities located uh, using the best practices of the mold industry. So these diameters are computed based on the uh, thickness of the part, on the size of the part, and on the filling time we are defining. We can change this, this is parametric setup, so we can say, no, I want to have increased the distance between my parts, so I will hit create, here say I will remove the current, yes, of course, I select again my surface, and now I have increased the distance between uh, my parts in the mode. And of course, we can basically define the process, as you can see, the filling time now increase, we can change it, and we can perform the analysis for the multi-cavity mold, considering the sprue, runners, and gates, and my complete system. So this calculation may take around two or three minutes. So I have also this calculation already performed. And again, we can understand the evolution of the material, the material, how the material is getting warm during the filling, evolution of pressures, 
during filling, I can measure or I can plot the pressure at the injection BC to see how the pressure evolves during the filling process. I can check the evolution of temperature, well lines, setting traps, and so on and so forth. So this is a way to use Inspire Mold right from the initial design stage. Uh, but also, we would like to know more advanced uh, data from my from my process. I want to know what will be the deformation of the part after the molding. I want to know what will be the packing time if I will have sink marks and these kind of things that are included on a detailed analysis. So what I will show you now, let's go back to the original geometry and I will select a different geometry, a different part of the mouse to do this particular analysis. So I will go now for the this cover, the internal cover, okay, that is this component here. I will set up again the material. I will set up gate. In this case, I will use two gates, one gate in this location, one millimeter, and one gate in this location, again, one millimeter. Uh, I will set up a mold, so I will create a mold. I will place a cooling line. I may require a cooling line here, so I will use cooling line creator. As you can see, by doing a couple of clicks, I can define the path for the cooling line, and the cooling line will automatically be created. I can change the diameter. Let's say I want to have four millimeters diameter, and I will move the cooling line closer to the part in order I can extract heat. Uh, with better performance. Uh, I could create inserts, vents, and multiple components. So next, I will define the process. First, I will run the fast analysis again to check the front flow, and then once I have a great idea of the, of the gate location, I will perform the detail analysis. So I can set up again my filling process. Once I'm done, I can perform the fast analysis. I only need to select fast, and the average thickness of my part. That will be enough to set up the fast problem. By hitting the run button, the simulation will start, and I will show you what will be the result, okay, of the filling of this uh, part by using these two gates, for example. So I have two gates, so of course we'll have some well lines on the center that may not be convenient. I can check uh, the temperature during the filling, so temperature distribution looks quite nice, not too many, too cold the material. Uh, but if we see again well lines or end traps, that will, could be a problem to have a, a well line right in the center of this uh, rib that is supporting the force that the user is applying on top of the mouse. So that is not convenient. So what we can do again, we can change the gate location and we can see. Uh, Again, the front flow evolution, if I place a gate at the side of the part, we can go back again, change the gate location and put a gate at this location here. So now we can see how the material flows by using this gate position. So as you can see, to create different possibilities or different iteration is extremely easy. So what about the uh, advanced features, about the detail features, okay? So basically, the only thing we need to do, the setup to have a detailed analysis exactly the same, we should set up, of course, the packing stage, what will be the packing time, packing pressure, and cooling time, so ejection temperature and end time for the calculation, okay? And we can, uh, the only extra thing we need to do is to define this as, my, as a detail run, and I can perform packing, cooling, and work page analysis. And even if my material is already set up to use fiber reinforcement, I can also add fibers during the filling to predict the material properties at the end. So basically, I will hit the run button. Of course, the calculation will the calculation time will increase. This is not our fast solution, this is our detailed solution, but the accuracy will increase, will increase and the 
solution I will have will provide much more information than using the fast solver. Okay. One very important thing is that the mesh is automatically generated, so we don't need to define any kind of layers or any kind of assigned uh, element size on any particular geometry. Everything will be automatically defined. And as you will see, define the mesh is created considering multiple layers through the thickness. So I we are ensuring five layers on the thickness. We are ensuring uh, concentric boundary layers on the runner's gate and sprue. So the quality of the mesh is extremely good and everything is automatically down, done in background. So what can we see here? Again, we can visualize, I will turn off the mesh. I will add a, a cut section here and the uh, X plane. So what we can do here is we can visualize again the evolution of the front flow, considering the runner, sprue, gates, and how the material is filling the part. We can see the pressure, we can see the temperature. As we are using multiple layers, you will see that the, how the shear heating is affecting the temperature in the part. So we are considering the shear heating effect during the filling. You can see evolution of velocities, pressures, filling time, well lines, etc. But this is very similar to what we can provide with the fast solver. But what is the difference that we can now check, for example, the packing stage? And in the packing stage, we will be able to predict the pressures during the packing, okay? How the pressure is changing during the packing when we have the gate solidified so we cannot pack more material. We can predict sink marks that will be generated during the packing. So you can see how the ribs in the background are creating some sink marks on the skin of the part. And you can detect really deep sink marks or critical sink marks. And these sink, sink marks are because of probably the highest thickness that we have in this particular region. As I said, as a designer, I can always go back to my preprocessor and I can modify or edit the geometry trying to eliminate or mitigate this kind of defects. In this case, this part is hidden behind the cover of the mouse, but just imagine we have a uh, sync marks in a part that is uh, uh, the user can see, so this should be uh, avoided. So by editing the geometry, the original geometry or designer geometry, we can avoid uh, critical defects. So let's go back to the results. And I want to show you a couple of very interesting, interesting things in the detail analysis. So as I say, we can evaluate the filling, we can evaluate the packing, we can evaluate the cooling process. Okay, so how the part is uh, cooling down during the after the filling. So as you saw, I have added uh, cooling lines to my mold. So as you can see, we will be able to evaluate and to optimize the effect of the cooling lines inside my mold. So as you see, I have added a couple of cooling lines on the top side of the mold, and uh, we can see the effect that is creating this uh, cooling line. So the top part of the mold is cooled, and the bottom part of the mold is, uh, is, uh, is, is hotter than the top part. I do this on purpose just to show you the difference between uh, or what we can achieve by adding cooling lines. And the advantage is again that we can, at any time, we can go back to the preprocessor, we can select the cooling lines, and we can edit or modify the location or the shape or create new cooling lines uh, in my model. So let's go back to the to the final stage that is the packing process, okay, the, sorry, the work page. So in work page, we as designers, it's extremely interesting for, for a designer that will show us, because packing will show us the variation on the geometry uh, that the part will suffer after the production, after we remove the part from the mold. So the idea is to show how much deformation we have or how the part is being deformed 
after we remove the part from the mold. This is, of course, I'm increasing the deformation in order we can see. So it's multiplied by, I think, by my factor is, I'm using 50 as a factor of multi to multiply the deformation, but this will allow us to see the tendency and also to measure, to measure the deformation that the part uh, is showing after the molding. So I can go here, I can select my tool, measuring tool. I can click this location here. I can select this location here. And I can see how this is changing during the cooling stage and after removing the part from the mold. So as you can see, we have the original size or the original dimension, the design dimension. And after the cooling, we have a different dimension. So this is extremely useful for the designers to compensate, to compensate the deformation of the parts after the molding. So with that, and I'm happy because I have no crash, and this is uh, something rare, <laughs> to be honest, I was expecting some live crash of the tool, but uh, since that is working excellent, uh, I will finish with uh, one more slide just to do a recap of what we have discussed until now. So a couple of uh, key features I want to uh, mention. As I said, we can generate the mold design, we can help the user to generate a mold design, and we can help the user to modify the design of the part to meet the manufacturing or structural requirements. And this is very important. Our geometric uh, capabilities let us let the user to work on the design of the part and on the design of the mold, and this is very important. We can evaluate easily and really quick different configurations of the gate of the runners of the number of cavities and as you saw this is extremely simple we are using a really advanced solver uh, and uh, that we have been developed for the last years uh, that allow us to perform advanced physics during the simulation we can predict the most common defects that you will see or that you can see in the injection molding industry and of course as i mentioned we can uh, perform using the detail solver fiber reinforcement analysis. And based on that, we can predict the final material properties of the part by using uh, fiber reinforcement. So with that, I will give you, I will give uh, the control to Ken uh, that will show us a couple of slides more and uh, we'll close the session. So thank you very much. Alter solution for plastics is more than just Inspire Mold. Using our innovative Alter Units licensing model, customers have access to all other Alter simulation capabilities as well. For example, multi-scale designer for extended material modeling or OptiStruct for stress and fatigue. To illustrate this, here is one, one final customer example. Nelato are the makers of this medical device. It's a self-injection pen. The design requirements were to deliver a single dose of medicine in a consistent and safe manner and to make the product robust for both repeated reuse as well as misuse, i.e. dropping. To create this product, a broad set of all their capabilities were used. So in addition to injection molding, a PCB simulation, low frequency electromagnetic simulation, kinematic simulation, multi-phase CFD, uh, nonlinear structural analysis, uh, impact simulation, i.e. drop test, and optimization, all were from alter solution capabilities, all from a single licensing system. So I think this is the, the power you get when you get uh, uh, simulation technology from Altair. Okay, with that, um, I guess that's it. I hope you enjoyed our presentation today. Uh, in summary, Altair Inspire provides a broad suite of manufacturing simulation tools. We have casting, stamping, plastics and metal extrusion, 3D additive, polyurethane foaming, and now injection molding. For Inspire Mold, a couple of points to note. First, it's easy and intuitive to use, and it is fast. It can be used early and often to improve your design's moldability. 
Second, it is accurate. Our new simulation te technology combined with the detailed material modeling from our recent acquisition of Embase creates an industry best of class solution. And finally, Inspire Mold is only part of a comprehensive Altair tool set from conceptual design to simulation driven design and optimization to detailed design validation. Altair has you covered. Okay, for more information on uh, Inspire Mold, you can go see our website, altair.com slash inspire dash mold. Uh, and I think with that, uh, I'll close the presentation. Again, thank you for attending and uh, thanks for your attention. Mm -hmm.